So in this video, we're going to do a couple of practice problems on the nomenclature of alkynes. We're going to start with this problem when we're asked to provide the systematic name for this molecule that contains an alkyne functional group. And if you remember, the, the first thing that we're asked to do is to identify the parent chain, uh, which is the longest continuous chain of carbons that contains the alkyne. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbon atoms. Uh, I went towards chlorine here. I could have gone uh, up the up this way, but uh, if you remember all the way back to when you were first learning about nomenclature, we're also asked to choose the parent chain in a way that generates the largest number of possible substituents and not the smallest number of possible substituents. So I'm going to go ahead and label that parent chain in red, and it has eight carbon atoms in it. So we're going to go ahead and type in uh, octine. <clears throat> and we also know that we have some substituents, uh, a chloro substituent and uh, a methyl substituent that we need to figure out what to do with. Now, our next step is to number the carbon atoms. I'm going to generate some numbers here. Uh, there's seven carbon atoms, so I'm going to generate seven. Oops, overwrote seven with eight. Uh, and go ahead and try out different numberings. I'm starting from the right-hand side here, um, just because that's what I chose. Um, you can see as I'm numbering it from right to left, uh, we get the alkyne starting at carbon three. And we want to choose the numbering scheme that generates the lowest possible number for the alkyne. Uh, and I know, because I have eight carbon atoms in my molecule, that this is going to be the lowest. It's going to be three. If I start on the left and go one, two, three, four, five, I'm going to get five for the alkyne. And I could have guessed that, actually, uh, by recognizing that three, uh, eight minus three is five. So now we can uh, edit the names here of our parent chain and their substituents to put in the, the numbers. So the octine starts at carbon three, so three octine. The chloro is at carbon one, there's one chloro. And the methyl is at uh, carbon two, two methyl. And something, uh, something happened here in the chloro. Let's, there, there we go. <clears throat> And now all that's left to do is put that together. And if you, uh, again, remember we list substituents in alphabetical order. We don't list them in order by size or, or in numerical order by where their locant is. We uh, list them in alphabetical or order. So because chloro is alphabetically before methyl, we list that first. And then we put three octine at the end. Uh, and if you remember from the last video on alkyne nomenclature, it's perfectly legitimate to stick the three in between the oct and the ein uh, to be really explicit about where the uh, oct, where the, the ein in octine is. This is one chloro, two methyl, three octine. Here's another problem where we've been asked to draw 5-ethyl, 2,5-dimethyl, 3-heptine. Uh, and in drawing the structure from a name, it's a good idea actually to think about this in the same order that we did for um, you know, generating a name from a structure. We're going to start with the parent chain uh, and work our way towards the substituents. So we need to have a, a seven carbon chain. Uh, and I actually have a little tool in my program here. I can draw out uh, seven carbon atoms really quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And I need an alkyne at carbon three. One, two, three put in the alkyne. Uh, and immediately uh, I look at that and remember, wait a minute, I need to show linear geometry around the alkyne. Uh, so I'm now going to draw my alkyne a little bit more carefully. Make sure I show linear geometry around the alkyne. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three heptine. Now we go and we look at the substituents. We have a we have a two, five dimethyls. So that means we have a methyl group at carbon two and another one at carbon five. So here's, uh, um, let's go ahead and create the numbers on the alkyne, uh, let's get six back. One, two, 
to 3 where the alkene starts, carbon 4 where the alkene ends, here's carbon 5 at the other end of the alkyne, 6 and 7. So we want to put a methyl group at carbon 2, I want to put a methyl group at carbon 5. No, 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 I don't like, I've got my 2 label here in an awkward place, we're going to move my 5 label a little bit, there we go. Uh, and if we go all the way up to the front of the name, we also have 5-ethyl to 5-dimethyl. So we have an, an ethyl group also at carbon 5. Uh, I don't want to close that down and put a ring. There we go. Uh, so at carbon 5, I have a methyl group, uh, an ethyl group, and, and the end of the chain. Don't be confused by this ethyl group, carbon 6 and 7. That's actually part of the parent chain. That's not the, the substituent. We have another ethyl group there. Uh, here's another example. This molecule has an alkyne in its, or an alkyne in its structure and an alkene in its structure, uh, and that leads to an extra layer of complication. Uh, but we attack this problem exactly the same way. We identify the parent chain. In this case, we want to identify the longest chain of carbon atoms that has both the alkyne and the alkene in it. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, carbon atoms highlighted, and I'm going to generate some num numbers here, and now I have two sevens, make a six, okay. You might ask yourself, well, which way do we number this? Well, we could number it, uh, we put one, two, the alkene could be at two, and then that would make the alkyne at uh, six. We could have the alkyne at two and the alkene at six, uh, and it turns out that uh, the folks who designed the IUPAC system uh, already anticipated this problem and have provided guidance. So when you have more than one functional group in your molecule that can control the order of the numbering, uh, there is actually a, a priority that has been devised already. And it turns out that alkenes have higher priority than alkynes. And the reason for this being is that alkenes are more common functional groups than, than alkynes actually. So we would number this to give the alkene the lower number and the alkyne the higher number. And then we would name this uh, ox or eight carbons. And I'm gonna use this two ene uh, en and then, then six ine uh, and for uh, a name like this, uh, putting the numbers right in front of these infixes is actually more clear than anything else we might try to do. You know, if you put two six octinine, you you wouldn't know which number went with which functional group. Uh, and then we appear to have a, a methyl substituent at carbon two. Now all we have to do is assemble this into a name. So this is 2-methyl-oct-2-ene-6-ine. Uh, and notice that we don't put the, the E at the end of ene. We just need one E at the end of the name. Uh, and there we go. 2-methyl-oct-2-ene-6-ine. Our final example is a molecule that has two alkynes in its functional group. This molecule is reasonably uh, symmetric, but let's go ahead and look at the parent chain. Again, we're looking for the longest continuing continuous chain of carbon atoms with the, uh, with the alkyne functional groups in them. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I must like eight today. I've made several uh, things. Um, because this molecule is symmetric, because this molecule is symmetric, uh, it does not matter whether we start from the right or the left, we will get uh, an alkyne at carbon two and an alkyne at carbon six, no matter what we choose. And when it comes to naming the parent chain, we would call this oct, and you would be like two six, and we'd put di in here because there are two of them. 
Uh, I don't know why we've decided this needs to be italicized. We don't want it to be italicized. Guy, ein. Guy, ein. And because oct26 dyine is a little bit tricky to uh, pronounce, a lot of people will slip an A in here and call this octa26 dyine. So octa26 dyine. Or you could uh, have 26 octa dyine. And here, here the uh, here the the uh is really important because you'd have oct die, you know, with no inter intermediate vowel. And we also have two methyl groups for 5-dimethyl. And my software really wants these things to begin with I to be italicized. I don't know what's going on there. And again, all we need to do is put these two things together, 4-5-dimethyl. Uh, we'll have 2-6-octadiene. Or we could have 4 uh, 5 Dimethyl octa two six two six diine uh, diine. And you might look at that diine and be like, mm, "This is a weird combination of vowels." I agree with you, but there's the IUPAC nomenclature. Thank you for watching. Uh, in our next video, we're going to start exploring some of the chemical properties and reactions of alkynes. Stay tuned.